species. And one of the things that that you have to do in trig, trig is a class that you have to memorize a lot of stuff in, probably more so than most math classes. So you got to make sure you start working on these identities. And as we go through this, I try to teach you where they come from so you can develop them if you need to. So the first thing that we have is these are what we call the reciprocal identities. And actually, we already kind of learned that based on the definitions. So remember that the cosecant and the sine are reciprocals of each other. That's the reason why the cosecant is just 1 over sine. Okay, and then if you do it backwards, you would get this. Now, I want to show you one thing on this problem, and you, you don't have to write this down necessarily, but just to kind of get you comfortable with this. If you were to go through and write down 1 over sine theta, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that 1 over sine theta is the same as the cosecant theta. There's a way to reason it out. Okay, one thing we learned, I think, is we got SOHCAHTOA is one way that students can learn this. I, I don't like doing it that way because I never can remember how to spell it. Okay, somebody told me something about, oh, I'll have to remember, it had something to do with hippies. Something about a hippie tripping on acid. That TOA was tripping on acid. I can't remember how it went, though. So, some, oh, it was some old hippie, something, another hippie, I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. I happened to read that today, and I thought it was kind of funny. So anyway, the, the idea with this is the sign is the opposite over hypotenuse, okay, like that. And what you're doing on this, see, you're really just dividing Okay, and if you divide a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, so you get 1 times hypotenuse over opposite. Well, that's what the cosecant is. So, I mean, it's real easy to show that they're the same. But what you guys want to get in your mind, these are some of the easiest identities to remember, is the sine and cosecant are reciprocal, so are the cosine and secant, and so are the cotangent and tangent. So if you, if you know the cotangent, you can just take the reciprocal of the tangent. That's what that one over is saying. It's just taking the reciprocal like that. The other thing that's kind of good to know is where does this come from? So, for instance, if you took this identity, sine theta equals 1 over cosecant theta, okay, this is an equation. So if I multiplied both sides by the cosecant, what that would do is that would get rid of the fraction, okay, then you would get this, okay, you would get cosecant theta times sine theta equals 1. Now, the way that I try to help you remember this is this. Okay, if you can get down in your head that the sine and cosecant are reciprocals, then I hope it would make sense. For instance, let's just say the sine of something was 2 thirds. Then the cosecant would be what? Yeah. 3 over 2. What happens anytime you multiply a number by its reciprocal? You always get what? One. You get 1. So that's the way I think through that identity is you're just anytime you take a trig function times its reciprocal, you're gonna get one. So if you can remember that, that's a simple way to get that down. Okay? Usually students remember those identities. Okay, some of the ones we get into later are a little bit harder to remember. Okay, the next one is the quotient identity. And uh, what we have two of these, we have tangent is sine over cosine theta, then we have cotangent is cosine over sine. Now I'll show you where they come from because it's pretty easy to show that. Does it make sense if the tangent is sine over cosine that the cotangent would be cosine over sine? Yeah. Okay. The reciprocals, right? Remember, the tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. So if you know that, then you know that. So if you memorize that and know the relationship between tangent and cotangent, then you can build that identity. Okay, let me show you one way to uh, that you could do this. So what I want you to write down, because I'd like you to have this kind of for your record, is... We're going to just do the Soka Toa thing. So uh, the sine is uh, opposite over hypotenuse. I'm just going to use that and just kind of use those as variables. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse like that. Okay, we haven't learned the XYR definition of sine, cosine, tangent yet, but we'll get there. Okay, what this is really saying is it's saying you got the opposite over the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, when you divide fractions, what do you do? You flip the second one, and then you multiply straight across. So if you did this, you would end up getting opposite over adjacent times uh, hypotenuse over, whoops, I put that wrong there. That should be opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, like that, and then I got that. Okay, notice what happens. 
If those are variables, they cancel out, so you're left with opposite over adjacent. Okay, and remember, SOCA TOA, what is the o OA part, the TOA? That means tangent is opposite over adjacent, so this thing right here is equal to the tangent of, of theta. Okay, you can plug in those um, definitions of the trig function, it's easy to show that they're the same. So at this level, that's one way to do that. Okay, what you want to do is get these things memorized as soon as possible. Okay, All right. What I will be doing next Wednesday, and this is on Canvas, you'll have a, a quiz in class. And what it is, is it's just I'm trying to get you to memorize stuff as fast as possible. If you go to Canvas for week four, you'll see a quiz review, and it'll tell you exactly what to study. What I usually do on this quiz is it's just simple, it's simple um, uh, recollection of identity. So I might do something like sine theta equals one over blank. What goes in the blanks cosecant and so forth. But go on Canvas and look at that review because it'll tell you exactly what you need to have memorized before next Wednesday and then work on that a little bit over the weekend. Okay, these are the next identities. So um, this one right here, you need to get these memorized. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where this identity comes from. Then I'm going to show you how to derive the other two. You can memorize if you want to, but my philosophy is I always like to memorize as little as possible and understand where things come from because then I can come up with things as I go because you're going to forget a lot of this stuff if you're going to go to calculus. And if you get up like to Calc 1 and Calc 2, you're going to use trigonometry here and there. You're just going to be expected to either know this or be able to develop it on the spot. Okay, so this is what I would like you to write down. This is important to write down. I'm going to show you, first of all, where this comes from. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to use the definitions. Okay, so what we will do is the sine is the SOCA TOA, so that's opposite over hypotenuse, and we're going to square that. We're just going to turn it into an algebra problem and see if we don't get one out of this. Okay, the cosine's definition is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I'm going to square that. Now we're going to see what happens in this particular problem. Okay, so what we would have is if you square a fraction, the top would be squared and the bottom would be squared. Okay, so you have, um, you have that. Okay, now you have a common denominator already. Anytime that you're adding fractions and you have the same denominator, well, you just put them together. So what I would have is opposite squared plus adjacent squared over hypotenuse squared like this. Okay, now we're trying to get a one out of this. We're almost there, but we got one more thing to think about. So if you had a right triangle, if this was theta, that would be your hypotenuse, that would be your opposite, and that would be your adjacent, right, like we learned. Okay, so let me ask you a question on this and see if you catch this. If you look at this triangle up here, what would be this thing? What would be the opposite square plus the adjacent square? What would it be? It would be h squared. How come? Pythagorean theorem, right? So this squared plus this squared is that squared. So you can replace that numerator with h squared, and then you're going to get a 1 out of it, see? Okay, so what you'd have next here is you would just have that over that, so it's equal to 1. Okay, that's one way at this level to show a student how to do this. This book that we work with is different. Most trig books teach you not the triangle definition first, but our book does, so at this level I have to kind of show it that way. Okay, now, the next thing I think is real important that you know how to do this, you can memorize all three, or in case you forget them, what I tend to find is most students are very good at remembering this identity. Okay, just it's an easy thing to remember, and it'll show up a lot. So I'm going to show you how to develop this identity right here. Now remember, you have an equation, so what I'm going to have you do is if you write that identity down, we're going to divide each part by the cosine squared of theta. This is a very helpful thing to learn how to do because I do this all the time when I'm teaching because I remember the sine squared plus cosine squared, but I always forget the other two. So in my mind, I kind of develop them as I go. Okay, let's see if we know what this is. This. A lot of you have had trig before, so you may already know some of these. Okay, what did we say sine over cosine was on the previous page? Tangent, right? Okay, so this thing is the tangent squared. Okay, so like if you look at that identity that we had on the previous page, we have sine over cosine's tangent. Okay, what is the cosine over the cosine? Well, that's just one. 
because it cancels out, right? Okay, how about 1 over cosine? That's on the first page of your handout. You know what that is? I will show you. Okay, if you look over here, look at this. 1 over cosine is the secant. Okay, so if you got 1 over cosine, that gets changed into the secant squared. Okay, so let me get back to where I was here. So that thing becomes secant squared theta. Okay, so that's that identity. That's how you make it. So if you once you kind of get used to your identities, in case you forget that middle identity, that's how you figure it out. I do that all the time when I teach. Okay, all right, let me show you how to do the third identity. So again, what I do is I just tell students, start off by writing down this identity because you're likely going to remember that one the most. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do this time, instead of dividing by cosine, I'm going to divide by sine squared. Okay, and everything has to get divided by that. You're working with the same operation to both sides. Okay? All right, let's see what this is. What's sine squared over sine squared? One. One. Do you know what cosine over sine is? It's on the previous page. If you don't, cotangent, right. Okay, that's an identity that we just talked about a few minutes ago. Okay, which trig function is the reciprocal of the sine? Cosecant. So that becomes cosecant squared. Now, you might not follow this clearly until you get these identities in your head, but that's a simple way to develop the identity. See, that matches that, and you got it. Okay? So that's a nice thing for a trig student to know how to do. Other choice is just memorize them all. Okay? All right, so does that make sense, kind of what I'm doing? Okay? Now, what we typically do in, in this second part of this section is we, we have exercises that help you learn your identity. So... I'm going to run through some of these. What I tried to do on this is I tried to just put the identities. So the identities we've mainly talked about here are the three I just showed you, the tangent, cotangent, and then these reciprocal identities. Okay? We call these the Pythagorean identities because they come from the Pythagorean theorem. You can think of that as a squared plus b squared equals 1 squared. And then we, I kind of showed you where those come from. So everything that we're going to do in these exercises is going to require that you know something about this. And when you're doing your homework, if you don't have them memorized, you can just look at those identities. Okay, so here's the idea. With this problem, what I'm doing is I'm giving you the sine, and I'm giving you the cosine. So I'm going to do two parts. I'm going to do the secant, and then I'm going to add one thing. I'm also going to just have you do the tangent also. And let's talk about how that goes. Okay, now well, what you're going to do on a problem like this is, if you want to find the secant, well, one way to find the secant is do 1 over cosine. Did I give you the cosine? Yeah, so that's a good way to do it. Or the other way is just to know, if I gave you the cosine, the secant is just the reciprocal, so it would be 3, right? Okay, so if I give you a secant, it's, uh, or I'm sorry, a cosine, it's easy to do that. You can just do the reciprocal. Or we can do it this way. I'm going to show you this way. So secant is 1 over cosine. Okay, cosine is one-third, so we would have one over one-third. And what that's really doing, you can do this in your head. You're really doing one divided by a third, so that's one times three, or it's equal to three. So the answer to the uh, secant would be three, but you can do that in your head. That's how that identity works. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, all right. Okay, now we're going to try to find the tangent. Okay, and again, look at your identity. Some of you have done this, some of you are new to this. Notice I gave you a sine and cosine. Okay, which identity would be useful for us to find the tangent? I gave you sine and cosine. That's the key. What do you see? Sine over cosine. How about this? Okay, that's the easiest. Okay, if we're trying to find the tangent, we can do just do sine over cosine. See, I gave you the sine and cosine. So again, what we're trying to do is see which of these identities are the simplest to use. Okay, so I'm going to use that identity. Okay, so here's what you want to do is just write down that identity. The tangent theta is sine over cosine theta. Now, the sine theta I gave you. So if you look at the problem, see, I gave you the value of both of those. So we're going to have 2 root 2 over 3 all over 1 third, like that. Okay, now, without going through all the details of this, this is a division problem. So if you divide by 1 third, what are you really doing? You're multiplying by three. Those threes will cancel themselves out, and you can do that in your head if you're confident in doing that. 
And the reason for that is, is really what you have is 2 root 2 over 3 times 3 over 1. That cancels out, so the answer would be 2 root 2 like that. Okay, so if I give you a sine and cosine, it's easy to find a tangent, and it's also easy to find a cotangent. If I wanted you to find a cotangent, then you'd just do this backwards of what I just showed you. Okay, so what you're trying to do with these problems is look at what I gave you, see which one of these things would be useful to you. Okay? Okay, let's look at this one. I'm going to do two things on this one. If you wanted to find the cosecant, and I gave you sine and cosine, what could you do? You can do this one in your head. How does the cosecant relate to the sine? They are reciprocals, right. So if the sine is one-fourth, what is the cosecant? It's four over one, okay? Or you could use this identity right here that says cosecant's one over sine. That just says they're reciprocals. That's all that says. So you can do that in your head. Okay, so cosecant, you could say one over sine or just do it in your head. If you did it that way, it would be one over one-fourth which would be equal to four, like that. Okay, so that's how you do that. Okay, everybody with me? Okay. Okay. Let's do this uh, next one here. Okay, so this time we're wanting the tangent. I already did one of these. So if you if I gave you the sine and cosine and want you to find a tangent, what's the easiest way to do it? Sine over cosine, right. Okay, so you got this identity right here. Look it up until you get it memorized. So you're going to have sine theta over cosine theta. And then you can just plug these numbers in and then do the arithmetic. So you would end up having square root of 5 over 3, all over 2 thirds. Okay. Again, what happens is the 3's cross out, so you'd end up with the answer as square root of 5 over 2. That's it. I just want a simple, simplified answer in a fraction form. That's it. Okay? Everybody okay with that? Okay. All right. Let's do one last like this, then I'm going to do kind of something a little bit different with the identities. This time I want to do two things with this one. Uh, let's do a cotangent, and then let's do a, um, uh, let's say a cosecant, and just go ahead and, and crunch those two out, okay? So the easiest way to do a cotangent is to do this identity. Cotangent is cosine over sine, so we're just going to take this approach on this. Okay, that looks like I gave you the cosine is a third. I gave you the sine is 2 root 2 over 3 like that. Okay, now what uh, cancels out? I want you guys to be able to do this in your head because it's, you start doing this so long. The threes cancel out, right? Okay, because what you're doing is you're really dividing by a fraction. So those would cancel out leaving you... 1 over 2 root 2, okay? Now, we talked about rationalizing denominators, so you typically always want to rationalize, just develop that habit. So what do you do to rationalize? Multiply by root 2 over 2, okay? We've talked about that. You need to review that a little bit. So the numerator would just be square root of 2. The denominator would be 2 times square root of 4, and you can do that in your head. You don't have to write that step because you would have square root of 2 over 2 times 2, so that would be square root of 2 over 4, like that, okay? So again, when you're doing this, the purpose of the activity is, okay, I give you something, can you figure out another trig function based on these identities? So tell me if that's making sense. I don't know. I'm not seeing much reaction tonight. I'm seeing people staring at the ceiling, uh, other things. Maybe you're still on your holiday weekend, okay? Because I don't know. Some of you got to get back down for this. Some of you don't, and that happens all the time when I so does that make sense what I did? Okay. How would you do a cosecant on this one? What would be the strategy? One over sine. Yeah, just do that or do the reciprocal. Okay, so remember those things are reciprocals. So all you would have to do to do the cosecant is you could either do one over sine or you could just do the reciprocal. So that's three over two root two. And then you would rationalize the denominator on that too. Okay. So again, when you do that, you would multiply by square root of 2 over square root of 2. Okay? And if you did that, you would have 3 root 2, 2 root 4. I'm okay if you process that denominator in your head, because that denominator is going to be 2 times 2. So you're going to get 3 root 2 over 4 like that. Okay? That's the idea. So there's a lot of arithmetic, and it's just basically trying to get comfortable with your identities. That's what I'm trying to show you. Okay? 
Okay, the next thing we're going to do is, uh, this is sometimes a little harder for students, uh, depending on what I'm giving you. So first of all, it's the same idea. I've been trying to, on this, uh, on my screen here, I'm trying to give you the identity so you can look at this as we go. Okay, so what is this thing? Okay, I want you to find sine squared of 65 plus cosine squared of 65. What is that? One. It's one. Because that's the identity, and identity tells you so. Now, in this identity, the thetas have to be the same. If that was 60 degrees, it wouldn't be one anymore. Okay, so that one's one because it's basically a direct application of that identity then. Okay, so that would give you that. Okay? Okay, now look at the next one. Okay? Okay, you have a secant squared and you have a tangent squared. Which identity has a secant squared and a tangent squared in it? This one. Okay, so we probably have to rearrange that somehow in this problem. So there's several ways you can do this, by the way. There's more than one way to figure this problem out. What I'm going to do is if you take this identity, the secant squared is the same as the tangent squared plus 1. So you can change that to tangent squared 25 plus 1. Those two things are equal. That's what the identity says. Then you can bring this down, and then you can work out the details and get the answer. Okay, so what does it appear the answer is? It's 1 because you got a cancellation, right? Okay. All right, so that would end up being uh, just a 1 left over. And that's one way to do it. But the key is, if you see a secant squared and a tangent squared in your problem, then that's the identity that's going to be useful to you. Okay, so that's how that goes. Okay, uh, next one. There's several ways to do this. You may know the answer to this. Okay, the answer to these problems is almost always the same. Do you guys know what the answer to that might be? Okay, yeah, they are reciprocals, right? So I said, anytime you multiply a number by its reciprocal, you get one. You can do that in your head. There's a variety of ways to do this. One way you could do this, and I'm just taking one way. The cotangent is equal to 1 over tangent. So what I'm going to do is just bring that down, okay, and I'm going to replace the cotangent with 1 over tangent of 40. Now it's pretty clear that it's equal to 1 because those two things cancel out, okay? So that's kind of what happens. There's more than one way to reason these things out. Okay, let's look at uh, this next one. Okay, let's see. How about sine over cosine? You know what that is? That's tangent, right? Okay, sine over cosine is tangent. Okay, so what we'd end up having here is tangent of 55 degrees. This thing gets replaced with tangent of 55 degrees, so the answer is zero. Okay, so that's it. So just kind of look at your identities and see which ones jump out at you that you can use. Okay. All right. Are you guys feeling okay with this? Okay. Shake your head or something. Okay. Because I have no clue. Okay. I want to give a test one day and you do good instead of being surprised. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Uh, just a couple more things on this. Uh, we, we've talked about co-functions, and the, this page right here is talking mostly about co-functions, so we need to kind of review that. I didn't write the correct identity on here, but here's one of the things that you want to learn to recognize, and you'll see this on the next assignment you're going to do, is what's the relationship between 20 and 7? They add up to 90. We call those complementary angles, so that has something to do with a co-function. Notice on this problem, 30 and 60... Okay, same thing, they add up to 90. Okay, so let me kind of remind you how these cofunction identities go. I tried to show you a way to develop the identity as you go. That's what I'm going to try to do. So here's the function, then here's the cofunction. I'm going to remind you of how to do this, because these identities you need to memorize or build them. Okay, let's start with the sine. Okay, let's, and let's just say that we have the sine of theta. What is the cofunction of the sine? The cosine. That's why we call it the cosine, okay? So that's going to be equal to the cosine of 90 minus theta, okay? Because what you do is one thing we learned last time is like if you have the sine of 30, that's the same as the cosine of 60. That's the way cofunctions work is if you do the sine of 30 
and do the cosine of its complement, they're the same answer. That's what we talked about last time. So you want to know how to build that. Okay. Now in this one, we have a secant and cosecant. So let's write that down. We have secant theta. Okay. What's the cofunction? It's the cosecant of 90 minus theta like this. There's more than one way to do the problem I'm going to do, but it has to do with these identities. And what you've got to recognize as a student is we got two cofunctions in there, and we have complementary angles. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to elect to do it this way, but you can do it a different way too. I'm going to change the secant to what it's equal to. Okay, the cofunction of the cosecant is of the secant is the cosecant. What is the complement of 70? Is 20. So that's the same. Okay, you want to get to a point where you can put that kind of thing together quickly in your head, like that. So I'm going to replace the secant with the cosecant of 20 degrees. Then I'm going to leave that denominator alone. That would be one way to do the problem. Okay. Now what's the answer? Negative one. Okay, you got something that cancels out like that. So that would be the idea. Okay, right? You could also do this problem this way. You could go like this. You could leave the secant alone. If you left the secant alone, you could change the denominator to the secant of 70. Okay, because that's the idea. Does everybody understand what I mean by cofunctions? Okay, so the idea is these are cofunctions, they have the same answer. Cosecant, secant. Those are complementary angles. They have the same answer. That's why you get one. Okay? So either way you look at it, you're going to get a negative one on that then. Okay? Now look at the next problem. Okay? What do I have? I have complementary angles, right? And I have cofunctions, sine, cosine, right? So you're going to apply the same what thing. There's two ways to do this problem. Okay? Now here's what I, I'm going to think of. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this alone, and I'm going to change this to its cofunction. Okay? So the cosine of 30 is the same as the sine of what in your head? 60. Okay, so I'm going to replace that with sine of 60. Okay? While I leave the other one alone. So that's going to stay sine theta. Uh, I'm sorry, sine of 60. That one's going to stay. So notice what we have is what's a sine times a sine. It's a sine squared, okay? We have an identity that has a sine squared in it, see, okay? Now what I'm going to do on this second part is I'm going to do this. I've got, I'm going to leave 60. I'm going to leave this one alone, and I'm going to change this one. So when I change this one, that's going to be really plus cosine of 60, and then the one I highlighted in blue is going to stay the same. So see what I'm doing is I'm just changing one of them. So what do I have? I have... Sine squared 60 plus cosine squared 60, so what's the answer? One. One, because we have an identity that says cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. Okay, that would be one way to approach that problem. Okay, the other way to do this would just be to change the other one. Okay, the thing is you're going to get that identity right there. Okay, so one thing that you want to make sure that you spot really quickly is stuff like this. I want you to be able to do stuff like this in your head. Okay, that's equal to the cotangent of what angle in your head? 80. Okay, that's the idea. That's how cofunctions work. All right, the angles add to 90 and then they're cofunctions. Okay, once you get that down, you'll be able to identify what we're doing in that problem. Okay, okay, is there any questions with that? Okay, uh, sometimes students.